40, I know you're, you're never going to be happy to, to lose, but the fact that all the circumstances coming into this game, there was a lot to take out of that performance that was, was positive. Yeah, um, I just said to the boys, I don't usually do a, a post-game chat with them, but you know, I did tonight because I just had to say, like, I'm so proud of them. Like, it was, we fought, we, we, we made some errors. Um, there was also a lot of things that we sort of spliced in in short notice to junk it up, knowing that we had Taj out. So, um, you know, a couple of times we missed switching up onto Cotton. A couple of times we missed switching onto Vic Law. And he had a couple of uncontested. He had uh, two back-to-back -back uncontested threes, which hurt us. Um, but, you know, like, <laughs> I can't fault their effort. They were, um, they played hard. And, you know, we're, we're, we're battered, we're bruised. And, um, you know, they just gave me everything. And, you know, how can I be upset about that? The start was pretty incredible. What, what, what from your opinion, what worked so well in that in that first quarter, especially the way you only just disrupt everything that they were trying to do? Yeah, I mean, I think all season we've had great opening quarters. Like our um, our attention to detail and, and, and knowing the adjustments that we've made. Um, you know, we're fresh, so the mind's good um, because the body's feeling good and, you know, we're, we're on point with a lot of things. Um, then, as you know, as the game progresses on, fatigue starts to kick in and you know, we start to make some uh, errors. Um, you know, Cotton had 19 in the second quarter. And again, we got, we allowed him to get going again. It was a, a second chance effort. They got the O board. That's his first points, making the second chance points. And, you know, then they involved a couple of on balls and we're supposed to switch up and we switched down. So he's splashing those. Um, then we change up the coverage a little bit again and then we foul him and we know like he's he, how he draws fouls, and he, he's a very good basketball player. And um, you know, we still did that. So um, yeah, I think that's what it is. You know, we, we we have great first opening quarters. Now it's just a matter of making sure that um, how we rotate through, um, whether we use the quarter time breaks, whether I need to do a better job communicating it in the timeouts, um, just to make sure that the message is the same. Now, when you woke up this morning, you knew that you weren't going to have Mirka or, or Scotty, but you didn't know you were going, going to be without Taj. How much did that change things that you had to do at both ends? Because he's probably the best defender in the league. He's also been your best offensive threat, your main ball handler. I mean, it's a, it, was a, it was a big loss on game day. It was, I mean, it was an interesting week in general. We've had two casual uh, contacts. Uh, JK was one of them, so he was quarantined until he got his negative result. Um, so even how we prepared for the week, we did so without Jared. Um, so we, we sort of, and again, like, it, by no means are we trying to play victim here because everybody's in the same COVID situation. And, and I mean, massive credit to um, the NBL uh, headquarters for trying to just get games going and, um, you know, making, you know, uh, these matchups available. So, you know, we prepared all week for a Brisbane game. That didn't happen. Um, we met on the Tuesday, I think it was. I'm losing track of my days. Uh, we did our, our scout with the coaches. And again, you know, Sam Gruggan, uh, Kerry Williams, Will Lopez. I mean, because I'm a hard person to work for. Um, and I mean, that was the school of Trev that I came up through that there's an expectation to get a lot of work done. And, but I didn't have to worry about changing schedules when I was an AC over at Perth. And so, you know, Gruggs did a great job preparing for a Brisbane game. And then we prepare for a New Zealand game. And then we get a, we get a call uh, that could be potentially Sydney that changes to Perth. And, and, you know, they punch out this amazing game plan in 24 hours, which then changes when Taj goes down. And so um, this is what I mean with the guys is they did a great job that we wanted to mix it up a little bit defensively. Uh, we started switching everything. You know, we started hard showing a little bit more. We dabbled in a little zone that didn't work, unfortunately. And, um, you know, we, we kept the game. We tried to keep him guessing. Um, so um, what was the question? I forget. Justin, how big Big of a loss, Taj obviously was. Oh yeah, 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 and he was, and and he is, and and everybody who we missing out of our lineups a massive loss, and um, 
Um, you know, so that changed how we want to defend. And, you know, pull, I threw him in there and, you know, that's great. He's, he went up against the best player in the league. You know, there's a reason Bryce Cotton earns the dollars he does and wins the MVPs and the scoring titles. And, you know, that's a, that's a tough matchup. And, uh, you know, Bull learnt how that's officiated and he's going to be better for it. And, uh, again, I can't fault the guys for, for, for that. I wonder to get your thoughts on Majuk Deng as well. He's in career best form right now and he's, he's really taken on the responsibility of being a leader and a, and a big-time scorer and, and someone that, you know, wants to be having a huge impact in all areas out there. Yeah, um, and playing out of position as well, we moved him to the three. So, um, you know, Juk is just... We're riding that momentum at the moment. He's, his confidence is high and, and you know, we want to try and get him the ball. Um, JK and, and company do a great job, you know, running sets for him and getting his looks. Um, but yeah, I mean, with all the players that we got out, you know, the, the opportunity's there for him and he's in his in his grasp it with both hands and super happy for him. Have a good Craig. Yeah, Jared, stressful week. Early for you. Take us through what it's been like living through those circumstances and trying to be a professional at the same time. Um yeah, when, once you get that message to say, you know, you need to go get that test, it kind of throws you a little bit. And then obviously you're stuck in your apartment or your house, whatever, trying to prepare for a game and keep active and keep the body moving um, all at the same time, not knowing, you know, whether you have COVID or not. But um, at the end of the day, we're professionals and, and that's just the time, times that we're living in. So you just got to adapt and... I think for me, being at this stage of my career, it was quite nice having two days off the legs, 40 not shouting at me, keeping my body fresh for tonight. So um, it wasn't ideal, but you know everything has its purpose, and yeah, there's positives and negatives come from it. We've seen absolute chaos in cricket today as well, with blokes being ruled out left, right, and centre. Um, do you are, you are you happy after hearing Scott Morrison's change the casual contact definition yesterday? Do you think that will de-stress a lot of players about? going to a cafe just to buy a coffee? Yeah, I think so. And I think the NBL has uh, given us these rapid tests that we do daily now, so that adds a, lot, a, lot, a bit of peace of mind as well to know that when you show up in the morning, um, you get your test, you're fine, you carry on. Um, but obviously we still need to take precautions and, and do the right thing. And for you, Marshall and Nelson, the situation is really interesting because they were left WA with the ability to go to Queensland and come back, and now he can't come back for, until fe mid-February or whenever we're the border of Queensland now. How long is he actually expected to be part of the squad? What are you, how long are you signing for? Yeah, and, and that thing, it's, it's obviously, um, you know, dependent on the bodies that we got out. So, um, you know, Marshall's been outstanding. I was speaking to him around Christmas. Um, we pulled the trigger on Monday, flew him out on the Tuesday. He practiced on the Wednesday, Thursday, and he, and he suited up. But I feel like, you know, they're, they're talking about all these 10-day uh, contracts NBA guys are um, getting. I mean, that was sort of our version, right? We've got to bring a guy who's NBA already. And I knew uh, Marty keeps a, keeps himself in shape and, and, and would be available to, to go. And... Um, yeah, he's like he he he's an NBL player and he wants to have another crack at it. And we we spoke about the border situation. Um, you know, I I want to give him this opportunity, um, see what he's capable of doing, and 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 going on from there. But you know, this this is again just another example of just the dedication that these guys do uh, to their craft and 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 where they want to get in their basketball. That. Um, you know, Marty knowing that it may be a while before he can get back into WA just to have another shot at the NBL. Um, you know, massive props to him for that because he's chasing a dream. So do you expect your injured guys to be back before Feb 5? Don't know. And this is um, obviously COVID's a factor as well in, in terms of return to play. So... Um, you know, we've got a great high-performance team uh, led by Josh, Rowe and, and, and Steph who, um, you know, have a return to play timeline. Um, you know, I'm real careful in the fact that I don't want to speed it up unnecessarily this early in the season. Um, but you also got to factor in that, all right, suddenly now we've got one uh, that's a casual contact and that prolongs it a little bit. So uh, Marty's insurance for us. Um, you know, we're going to keep using him as long as we've got a spot for him. 
Um, but yeah, the reality is, is like Jordan's timeline was great, and that's where we're able to give him limited minutes tonight to sort of get him um, back to 100%. Um, so he's he's ahead of everybody at the moment, and everyone else will start to filter through. JK, you you spent a lot of time guarding Bryce over the years, so you didn't need to learn a lot tonight. But how much would someone like Paul learn from spending a lot of these games tonight going up against Bryce? I think Forty mentioned it. It's you know you can talk about it, you can watch film, but until you actually get on the floor and um, and do it, um, you know that that's invaluable for him. And um, the thing I love about Bull is he's keen to learn. He's always asking questions. Um, he listens. He's coachable. Um, so yeah, I think for him, you know, he's a great defender as it, as it is. But he's going to uh, take a few big steps from that tonight for sure. His birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Bull, for tomorrow. Uh, happy birthday. <laughs> and 40, just finally, do you have any idea how serious Taj, his injury looks at this, at this point? Yeah, so obviously, because it was very quick when it all happened, um, we'll get him for scans. And like with everything, I'm not going to rush until um, I get all the, the, the information um, from the experts. So I'm the last to know with that, and I like to be. Um, you know, give me all the information and, and then tell me how we're going to fix it. Um, so once I know, I'll let you know.